As of now, the only type of pendulum system that we spoke about was a simple pendulum. And we said that a simple pendulum can experience simple harmonic motion only when the angle displacement is assumed to be very small. Now, let's discuss what a physical pendulum is and let's explore whether or not a physical pendulum is capable of experiencing simple harmonic motion. So, one example of a physical pendulum is a swinging baseball bat. So, let's suppose we pivot our baseball bat at some position, let's say at this position, and then we raise our baseball bat a certain angular displacement and we let go. Notice the object will begin to oscillate, will begin to swing back and forth. And we want to answer the question of whether or not the object, the physical pendulum, is capable of experiencing simple harmonic motion. So, let's suppose we draw the following baseball bat and our point of rotation, our pivot point, is at this position. Now, there's a force that's acting on our object that's creating that swinging motion. And that's the force of gravity. Now, the force of gravity, m times g, acts at the center of mass, let's say this position, and points downward along our y-axis. Now, this force can be broken down into its two component forces. One force points in the parallel direction to our lever arm, and the second force points in the perpendicular direction with respect to the lever arm. Now, the lever arm is simply the distance beginning at the point of rotation and ending where our force is acting. So, let's say it's given by the letter L. Now, this force, mg sine of the angle of theta, is the force that creates a torque. And that torque propels the object and allows the object to experience angular motion. So, it displaces the object along the following pathway. So, what exactly is the torque acting on the object? Well, the torque is given by negative. So, we choose negative to be in this direction. So, negative, the lever arm multiplied by the force that acts perpendicular to the lever arm. So, the lever arm multiplied by the force is equal to negative our lever arm L multiplied by mg sine of the angle of theta because this is the force that's acting perpendicularly to our lever arm. Now, recall the second law of motion for our torque. So, the net torque acting on the object is equal to the product of the moment of inertia of the object and the angular acceleration of the object. Now, angular acceleration is equal to the second derivative of our angular position function with respect to time. So, we replace our alpha with the following quantity. Now, what exactly is the net torque acting on the object at the center of mass? Well, the net torque, which is equal to this quantity, is equal to the only torque acting on the object at the center of mass is this torque this quantity here. So, this is equal to negative L times M times G times sine of the angle theta, where this angle theta is simply the angle between this force and this force that acts parallel to our lever arm. So, let's take this quantity and bring it to the right side. We get the following result. The sum of these two four, or the sum of these two torques is equal to zero. Now, if we assume our angular position is small, then our angular position is approximately equal to sine of the angle theta. So, we replace sine of the angle theta with simply theta. And we get the following equation. Now, notice this equation has the same exact general form as the equation of motion for any object that is experiencing simple harmonic motion. So, that implies that our physical pendulum does in fact experience simple harmonic motion, but only when our angle, our angular displacement is assumed to be small. If this is assumed to be small, we can go from this equation to this equation, which essentially is the same exact equation as this equation, except this equation is for physical pendulums. 
Now, recall the general solution to this equation is given by this formula. So that means if we want to find the identical general solution for this equation, we simply replace our maximum displacement with the maximum angle displacement and we replace our MAC or our displacement function with respect to time with our angular position function with respect to time. So therefore, this is our general equation for the following differential equation. So in other words, if we know what this quantity is, if we know what the phase angle is and the angular frequency is, we can calculate the angular position of our function as long as we are given the time value. So let's go back for a moment to equation number five. So if we take equation number five and we divide the entire equation by the moment of inertia by I, we get the following result. Now if we take this equation and divide this by M, we get this quantity plus K divided by M multiplied by X. So because of that fact, notice that I or LMG divided by I is equal to K divided by M. So because we have this relationship between K and M and MGL divided by I, we can get the following equation. So because the angular frequency is equal to the square root of K divided by M, and we just said K divided by M is equal to the ratio MGL divided by L, uh, I, where L is our lever arm, G is our gravitational constant, M is our mass of the object, and I is the moment of inertia of the swinging object, we can take this whole quantity and plug it into here to get the following result. And because 2 pi times the frequency is equal to the angular frequency, we get the following result. The frequency of our physical pendulum is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times the square root of MGL divided by I. Now, this equation only works and this differential equation only works as long as we're dealing with small angular displacements.